presentation. So, um, hello everybody again. Um, this is being recorded. So, if you're shy, that's fine. If you're not, that's fine. Um, we are very honored today to welcome Jane Montero from Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And she's still in the same time zone. I can't figure out <laughs> how that works, but. Um, so yeah, you guys know that I've been stalking people on Facebook to come up with new session ideas and, and bring new people into our circle. Um, and Jane is one of the lovely people who did not run away in the other direction. Um, and I am just fascinated by what we will be doing today because of the quilting and I love textiles and my mom is mom who's here is, is a quilter. <laughs> And just the, the, the idea of being able to do it digitally um, was just an eye opener. And I, it's like so simple, like why didn't, I guess it's when you know, you can't unknow when you figure out how to do these things. So um, I can't wait to, for you to show us what you're um, going to be doing. And I'm going to hand it over to you. And you can, if you want to hold questions till the end, just let everybody know if, uh, if it's okay for people to pop in during your, let, just let everybody know. So I'm going sure. to turn it over to you and I'm going to um, spotlight you for everybody. Oh boy, that's scary. There I am. Um, okay, before I start, I have to address Cynthia's comment. Her son went to U of M for grad school. That's awesome. Um, our daughter is currently in grad school there right now. So, all right, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to give this one a roll here. Um, I'm going to go full screen. Can you guys see that? Can everybody yeah. give me like a little thumbs up? Oh, or something? look at that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So, First of all, two little notes before I begin. Uh, my husband is in a, a Zoom meeting in the other room. Uh, and then our dog, our 80 pound golden retriever is over here on the bed. So other than that, all's good. If she barks, I may suddenly mute myself, but um, I think I think it'll be okay. All right, so here's what happened. Um, we started the year like everybody else and we were virtual. And I was very used to having kids create collages. And I thought, what in the world am I going to do? Because they don't have supplies. And I don't know how in the world I would do this. I have never done anything like what you're seeing ever. Um, I used to teach a unit on Faith Ringgold. And I would have kids create a border. A lot of times I would have them create a border by using markers. I teach fifth and sixth grade. So I would have them do designs with markers or repeated patterns, but nothing like this. And I have to be totally honest. Um, I had never even experimented with Google drawing until last year in June. And I just dove in because I had a virtual art club a lot of my students were using iPads and they were using um, apps on their iPad. And I thought I have an old iPad. I couldn't get new apps. I didn't want to buy a new iPad. I thought I've just got to do this. And I just little by little did it. I started taking every bit of my curriculum that I could and turning it into Google drawing projects because all my students had Chromebooks and I knew that they could do it. So with that said, let me move on here a little bit. Okay. So why do this? I've just told you a little bit about it, virtual instruction, lack of supplies, but also, you know what? This became quite a great skill builder for Google Drawing. And it also was able to help with elements of art. We could talk about texture. We could talk about repetition. We could talk about pattern. We could of course talk about color. We could talk about line. They're involved overlapping. I mean, it was so much wrapped into one. And other than that, aside in addition, my students have had a blast doing this. They asked me if they can do it for other things. We made Mother's Day cards that were based on a quilting idea. We're gonna do something for Father's Day. So really my response is why not? So how to do this? I'm gonna run through these slides and just show you the basic steps on the slides then I'm gonna lead you through how to do this using your Chromebook or your Mac or whatever you have. Okay, just so you can see the process because it's not hard. So the first step, we're gonna be creating a background and what you can see here is a background that I did. This is very simple. This was for Valentine's Day. 
my whole lesson was not very deep. It really wasn't. It was just, let's do this for Valentine's Day, right? So we looked up red patterns. I showed them how to mask it into square shapes. I showed them how to overlap them. That was really it. You could do a lot more with this though. You could get into historical pattern. You could get into all sorts of other designs. Um, we're gonna search the Google images. I'm gonna show you how to insert them, how to duplicate, how to resize, how to group. Don't worry if you've never done it before. So this is one that I started where I found a pattern I like. We're gonna get the correct size and then we're gonna place them on a Google drawing page. Then what you see on the right, we're gonna add a background material that's gonna fill in the other spots, okay? Then I'm gonna show you how to mask a shape. Unfortunately, Google Draw doesn't have a lot of shape options. It's not like you could say, oh, I wanna mask it into a flower, or oh, I wanna mask it into a this. You can really only use the shapes that they provide, but quite honestly, that's been fine. And kids can make their own shapes by combining shapes, okay? I'm gonna show you how to do all of this part. Then the last step is to really have fun, like you're playing with thread and I use the scribble tool and I'm gonna show you how to do all of that and change the point size, okay? So that is basically that part. I'm gonna back out of here for just a minute and I'm gonna come back over here to here. This is one that I put together the other day. I was playing around with green, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to start this. So I don't know if it's easier for you to do this along with me or to watch and do. So I'm gonna show you how to start it and I will start one and then you're welcome to work on yours and I'll work on mine. We're gonna do the background first, okay? Okay. And even if it's not one that you're gonna love, you'll get the idea of it, okay? So does everybody know how to get into Google Drive? Because if not, I can drop this link into it, the chat box for you to Google Draw. Mom, I, I don't. Okay. okay, let me do this. So let me grab onto this for a minute here. And let me stop sharing for just a sec so I can see what I'm gonna put into the chat box for you. Cause sometimes I end up clicking out. So I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna give it a title and I'm gonna put the link in there. So we'll all have one to start with. Collage. So give me just a second here. Okay, let me share this with you. And I'm gonna set this up so that you have to make a copy of it. So give me just a second here. I'll also share my whole presentation with you when I'm done. Okay. So click this link, give me just a second. And this is gonna force you to make a copy, okay? So click that blue link and I'm gonna get back to sharing my screen. And you will see this. Do you guys see what I have here? Um, I'm already in the document. Perfect. Okay. So for those of you that may not, when you click that, it's going to force you to make a copy. And you'll have the Google Draw checkerboard. So the first thing that we want to do is you want to think about maybe you're going to stick with a certain color. Maybe you're going to look up flower pattern. Maybe you're going to look up dots. It's totally up to you. Um, black and white pattern, whatever you want to search. Here's how you search. Go to the insert image box and we're going to search the web. Okay, so I'm going to click search the web. And by the way, you guys, if I'm going too fast or too slow, please say something. I'm pretending that you don't know how to do any of this. Okay, so if I'm, if I'm wrong, just I don't want to go too fast because I don't want to lose you. Okay, so we did insert image, we've done search the web, a box opens up on the right. I'm gonna search for images. What am I gonna search for? I'm gonna search for, um, I'll do green, just cause I did it before, pattern. Now you can, 
you see some choices that come up. You could do green pattern background, green pattern wallpaper, green pattern fabric. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just going to do green pattern and see what comes up. Ah, oh, look. So you want to find one image that you like. I've been kind of stuck on paisleys lately, so I'm going to stick this paisley right here. When you find anything you want of whatever you've got, you're going to click it. And then you're going to go down below where it says insert. And I'm going to insert that. Okay, that's too big, right? So you're going to get a variety of sizes when these come on here. To make sure this stays in proportion, if I just grab this like this, it, it might get kind of skewed. It might get distorted. But if I take my finger that I don't write with, put it on the shift key, hold it down, take the blue corner, pull it down, you'll maintain the proper aspect ratio or whatever you wanna call it. Okay, so we're doing the checkerboard part right now. If you want this to be four rows down or four rows across, you've gotta make sure that this same size fits all the way down. And I can tell you it's not going to just because I, I can see, but here's how you can check it. If I copy this image, I'm gonna paste it and see if I can fit four of them down there just to save time later, because otherwise you're gonna end up with all different sizes. So if I take this and if I do a Command C, I'm, I'm doing my two fingers, Command C is gonna copy it, Command V is gonna paste it. Oops, hold on. I'm gonna bring this down, there's one of those. Now look, I've only got this much left, so I know that's gonna be too big, okay? So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna resize this, bring this down a little bit smaller. This is the only thing that takes kind of a little bit of figuring for students. So let me try this again, Command C, Command V. Now, there it is twice. It's gonna be pretty close. Here it is a third time. Mm, it's not quite gonna fit still, okay? And I always have the speedster students saying, why do we have to do that? Can't we just, and I'm like, well, you can go on your own. And then they always come back and they go, oh wait, I wanna do that the way you did. <laughs> so here we go, this should be about right. This is looking pretty good. And look, there's other things you can do. You can use a ruler. I'm gonna go with it like this. It doesn't quite fit at the bottom, but I'm gonna make this go for now because I can just cut off the bottom of it later to save a little time, okay? All right, so here we go. Of course, that's gonna bother me and I'm gonna to wanna to fix it, but we'll be okay. All right, I'm gonna get these out of here. So what are we doing? We're doing in every other one right now, okay? So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go with four rows. I'm gonna line this up right here. I'm gonna bring this up right there. So this is your first step to fill the background with the checkerboard, okay? So again, you can just copy them and paste them and line up your corners. Once you get one started, it's pretty easy to go with the rest of them. And I'm gonna to go to here, okay? So, this is how I build it. And it kind of took me a while. Now we're gonna have a little issue on the edge. So I'm gonna pull this all the way over to the edge. Those of you that are mathematicians, and I know Steph, your mom, who's the quilter, she's probably dying how I'm doing this right now. <laughs> not at I'm all, not... <laughs> <It's> fascinating. <laughs> Cause you know what I do when it's all done and you download this, you're gonna get rid of those edges anyway. It's fine, it's, it's fine. Okay, so when you have these in place, I'm gonna group all of these together so that they don't move out of place when I start bringing other things onto the page. If you don't do that and you start putting new things on the page and something moves out, it's like, ah, everything's out of, you know. So simple trick, go to edit, there's a shortcut, but go to edit, go to select all, it's gonna pick all of them up. Go to arrange and go to group, okay? Now this whole group is gonna move as a whole unit. If you move something out of the way that you don't like, you go to the backwards arrow right there and it'll move things back, okay? So I'm gonna repeat that. I wish it had a lock feature like Illustrator does. I know, I know. And the thing is I can't use 
any of that at school. So I just have to roll with this one. Yep. Okay. So there's that part. Easy peasy. Okay. Now all you need to do, if you're going to go with a simple, um, just two fabric background, all you need now is one more image that's going to go behind everything. If you're going to get fancy and do like this one is going to have a square and that's going to have a, like the two left ones are going to be one, the two in the next one are going to be different. You could do that. But let me show you this part. I'm going to go back to my search the web. And I'm going to go here. My green is still up here because that was my last search. So this is a grand opportunity to talk to your students about color and busy, crazy visual things. <laughs> um, green is difficult to use. And a lot of students like to use green, but they like going for neon stuff. And I'm like, oh, you guys, that's too much. Like it's too hard to look at. So whatever color realm you're in right now, um, I try to find something that's maybe a bit more plain than what I had before. Otherwise they're gonna compete with each other. There was something beautiful that I saw earlier today and I don't, or I don't know the other day, it was some leaves. But um, I will just find, it doesn't really matter, but see, I get so picky. Okay, I'll come back up here. I'm gonna go with this and I'm gonna put this insert. Okay, so this, you see what happens? I don't wanna use that. That really is leaves, yuck. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna come up here. So when you find one that you wanna go with, I will just pick this. Um, I'm gonna move this, it looks like snowflakes, but I'm gonna fill this whole thing up, right? So you pick your finger on the shift key, drag a corner. Why am I holding it down so it doesn't get totally skewed out of proportion? It's going to a little bit because I've got to bring this over. Okay, but it's not gonna to be too bad. I'm covering up everything. Then, you know the trick, arrange, order, send it back. Done. Okay. Now there are some other things you can do. And sometimes I do this to kind of mute this because it's a little bit bright. So what you can do is you can draw a color, draw a shape over it, like an overlay and make it transparent. Or I can take this and I, well, I'll just do a select all. And I will group all of this now. And here's a recoloring option. Format options. Recolor will totally change it up. Like recolor will show you some options here. I don't want it to go to those. So I'm not going to use any of those. Uh -uh. But adjustments, look, go to brightness. And I can bring this down a little bit. You can also play around with contrast. I mean, I could go, you know, ee. So there's a lot you can do with this part here, okay? All right, let me show you masking and then you'll have a chance to play and I'm also gonna show you some other stuff too and I'll show you the stitching. Okay, in order to get something to have hearts like I did here, all you need to do is find the material you wanna use and then I'm gonna show you how to mask it. So. Oh, let me come over here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my search and my green is still gonna be up here. So I'm gonna go with this. I just saw one I wanted to use. I'll go back up here. I'll go with, uh, this is where I have decision-making. Okay, I'll go here. Um, now, here's how you mask a shape. Right above there is the crop image tool. We don't need to crop it. We need to change it. There's a teeny little arrow there for masking your image. Shapes. This is what I was saying before. You don't have too many. Um, you could do something based on July 4th because you do have stars in the call out section. Just note to self. So I'm gonna go to the heart shape, which is right here. I'm gonna click it. Now you can resize it. Take your finger, put it on the shift key, bring a corner down. Otherwise you might get a really weird heart shape, okay? So from here, figure out where you want it. I'm gonna bring another one in, but before I do, 
you can give these drop shadows. Okay. So if you want to give them a drop shadow, that's what I did on my red one that you might've seen in the, in the flyer, go to format options, drop shadow, open up this box. You can change the color of it. I'm just going to stick with black right now. So you can see it. You can change the angle of it and I'm going to change the distance. So look what happens when I'm playing around with the scale, right? You can make it more, change the angle. It'll be right underneath it. So this is kind of a fun tool that students like to use a lot. Um, now that I've got it there, I'm gonna change it to a darker green, a little bit softer, okay? All right, I'm gonna pick up one more heart and then I'm gonna show you the stitching. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna find one more. I'm gonna go with this really crazy one. This may or may not. Oh, holy moly, there it is. It looks like my bedroom wallpaper when I was growing up in the early, late 60s, early 1970s. <laughs> yes, I'm that old. Okay, here we go. Let's go to mask that shape. Go to shape. Go to heart. Bring this down. I had a Peter Max sleeping bag, an original Peter Max sleeping bag. Okay. That's awesome. I know. My mom just like gave it away. I mean, it'd probably be worth something now. Okay. Here we go. What am I going to do? I'm going to be consistent with my drop shadow. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to play around with this angle. See what happens if I bring this distance. Oh, it's going the wrong way. So I got to bring this back down. Try to line it up. Because I tell kids you wouldn't have like all over the place drop shadows. So make it the same color. Go down here. Oh, whoa. That doesn't even show up. There, that's better. Okay. Can I, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. You mentioned earlier the kids can make their own shapes mm -hmm. by grouping in order to create a mask. Yep. Let me show you. Let yeah. me get this one. I'm going to move this out of the way. So you can create certain basic shapes. And what you could do is if I come over here, I'll pick another color. I'll come up here and pick something that might show up a little better. Okay. Here's what I realized. You can make a flower mm -hmm. by coming over here and you take this circle. It's going to be the center of the flower. You could do two different kinds of materials for this. So I'm going to, you're still somewhat limited because you can only use the pre-made shapes, right? right? But I can copy this paste it and I'm changing this into an oval. I could make this like flower petals. And this actually, I could make that center a different pattern altogether. But you see, you could go around and around. I think I have it um, over on my green. Sorry, Lynn, I can't see where I am up here. Okay. So this you one. You're yeah. masking the fabric first into the individual shapes mm -hmm. and then grouping it. Yes. Okay. So, so you I can't, would. You can't create the shapes first and fill um, them. No. And fill them with what, like, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you want the fabric to be all in the same direction, mm -hmm. you couldn't group the shapes and then fill it once. You know, I, I yeah, I do. And I don't think so. Okay. Um, what I've found, and now again, so if you have older age students, because I'm doing this with, you know, 10 to 12 year olds, mm -hmm. this has been a pretty good way to go about it. Um, you just, the, the problem with Google Draw is you can't draw a really cool shape and then mask something into that shape. Okay, that's you, my question, yeah. Yeah, right. you can only, when you draw a really cool shape, the only thing you can fill it with is, is color, like a paint bucket. You know what I mean? Like you can't fill it with fabric. They that's need to the, fix that. I know they do, they yeah, do for they really sure. Need to fix that, yeah. Yeah, so look, so here's my flower. Mm -hmm. um, it needs, I covered up my center. My center's there. I just, so look, here's my center. I'm gonna group this. I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to put the center back on the center. And here's what you can do. I lost my center again. I need to put a line around my center. 
You have to bring it to the front. It's yeah, the no, I know. I just wanted to have it so I could see the edges because it's the same. So, so you can do things like this. I would spend more time on this flower, but I'm just letting you know, you could do something like that for sure. The other shapes that you have in the land of masking things, um, let me grab one more thing and I'll show you here. And then I'll show you about stitching. Sorry, I'm just too far down here. So other things that you can mask. If you go to call outs, you have stars. 5.678 all the way up. So you can do this kind of thing, right? Um, so this is what I was thinking. I wanted to do one for July 4th. I thought it'd be really fun. You could have all sorts of zany fun with that. Um, so there's that, okay? So the next step is to add your stitch lines. And the stitching lines, you can go wild with these, okay? I'm gonna get this stuff out of the way just cause it's a little too much for me to be looking at right now to show you. So here's what I do. You can, first of all, click a heart or click whatever shape you have. These are your two, these are your three commands we're gonna use, border color, border weight, and border dash. So border color, I'm gonna go with white just so you can see it. I'm gonna go with a line weight of two and I'm gonna turn this, look at your choices. You've got a dash like that. You've got more like a stitching line. You've got some other kind of fun lines, some wider dash lines. So you can do all sorts of things with this. Okay, come over to this one. I can do the same thing. I can do something different. So you wanna watch this though, cause if you get up into some of these, look how big that is, right? That's too clunky for what we're doing. Um, I usually stick around two. I like it to be a, a bit thinner. I think it's a bit more elegant that way, even though what we're doing is not necessarily elegant. Um, okay, so now, go to the last step is the select line tool, which is right next, is to the left of the text box, to the left of the shape box, it's right here, select line, boom. You are going down to scribble. And this is where I tell students, I'm like, yep, Mrs. Montero is telling you to scribble. So here we go, <laughs> get ready to scribble. So click this, this, so depending, I have a mouse that I'm using. I also do this on my laptop without a mouse. You may have to practice. You can't do a super long line. Sometimes you run out of space on the keypad on the Chromebook. So if I come over here, I'm off, I'm off my picture right now. If I come over here and do this, there's my line, okay? What can you do with that line? Make it a dash line. Do you want it black? Do you want it white? Do you want it purple? What color do you want it? I'm gonna click the arrow so I can move this over. The rest of these, I usually just draw on, you can drag a corner you can make this go a lot more. So this is where I, and to be perfectly honest, I don't even know how or why I started doing this. It just, I just, it was a winter night in Ann Arbor. What can I say? It's very cold here. It's very snowy here. And I might've had a beer and I just started doing stuff. So, you know, you just, there you go. And, those of you who are quilters, you could do all sorts of things, right? You could now, okay, can you do a straight line as a dash? Yes, you can. So you could come over here. If you're a, if you're a straight line person, if I draw this line, there's a dash. I'm up here now, right? So you could do, here's another thing you could do. You could draw heart, another heart shape We've gotten a little bit um, fancy schmancy in my class. I can draw a heart shape on top of this heart. I can make it transparent inside. So you go to the fill bucket and make it transparent. I can make this line a dash line like it was stitched, right? So you can do more things. I could put a smaller heart on top of that that's a different color. Okay, 
So I've probably gone too fast, but what questions do you guys have right now before I show you a little more? This is, this is phenomenal. And it's just, I love it. Thank you. And I honestly, I had zero, like I didn't see something anywhere. You know, it's one of those things that I just thought it was, it's been bugging me all year that I couldn't figure out how to collage things mm -hmm. virtually. And I just I'm, started, I'm excited to do this. It's I am really so, fun. yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, I have a million patterns for, for quilting. So you can create like the, the, the sawtooth or the, the tooth that, what, I don't even remember what the star, the, the eight pointed star mom from quilting, you know, mm -hmm. the Americana and all the, all the special oh. little patterns from Americana that you can do mm -hmm. and figure out how to do all this with like real quilting patterns, not just hey. the, the square. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I'm, my head is exploding right now with ideas. It's really, really fun. And, and I'll show you guys, um, let me just jump for a minute to something else. I really don't want to talk your, your ears off, but I do want to show you, um, so let me get back to here for just a second. So I know you know about the quilts of G's Bend, um, but you know, when I look at contemporary quilting, you can see how this just lends itself to Google Draw. Yes. And that information is from their website. I've got it quoted at the end. I, I didn't go through and rewrite it. You're adults. I figured you could have that to look at. Um, but there's so much, there is so much. Look at this. Oh, that's a beauty. Look at that. So this is from um, the one, what is it called? One Vision. Okay, there's an exhibit. I've got it in the references at the end. And I just thought, wow. Like, okay, so look at the background, like almost like a thumbprint, but look at behind that. It's like squares, right? So you could do... Google draw, you could do patterns in the background. Kids could spiral their own spiral. I mean, you could totally do this. It also makes me think of Kandinsky. It also makes me think of, of Sonia Delaney. It also, right, everything. This is actually sewn, this one? It apparently it is. It's silk and cotton, found fabrics, dyed. Well, it says, well, it says machine. What does it say in the descriptions? Machine quilted. Machine quilted. It is. A, oh my God. This looks like a digital collage. It doesn't know. look like it's fabric. I know. Holy cow. So then this happened. This was my newest experiment on the right. So I looked up the, what's it called? The National Quilt Museum. Mm-hmm. And this is on the left, is that they have an exhibit called Quarantine Quilts, Creativity in the Midst of Chaos. And so today I was playing around. And um, so I made the one on the right. And um, it's so fun. It's so fun. It, it um, I was kind of looking at this artist's um, graphic shapes, it's really, really fun. Um, so honestly, the sky is the limit. I made these circles as separate, like I did with my hearts. I made them separate, grouped and pulled them in. Um, the Visions Art Museum. So these are the references, International Quilt Museum, Visions Art Museum, and the G's Bend. You were going to uh, share this presentation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. This is wonderful. This it's is been really, really, really fun. Um, I honestly can't get anything you think of. Um, if I show you my drive, <laughs> I'll share this with you guys again. This is kind of funny, but. Um, you just gave me a new project for my summer therapy <laughs> for my own personal you know, that's what I do in the summer. I do my own art. And this is like something I want to totally play with. It is so much fun. So now you can kind of see how I got to this one. Um, so I love that. This one, I spent a whole heck of a lot of time. Um, I found 
So there's an over, there's a black line PNG overlay that I put on all that. If you can see the lines behind it, I didn't draw those lines. That's, that's doing a search, by the way. Here's something else cool to, to do. Um, black line pattern PNG. You're going to get all these things. Yeah. These you can put on top. I'll just put this on top of here and I'll see. So those, I play around a lot with those. Um, it's very interesting how, how these things, this is not quilting, but it's came about after quilting. I was just showing kids how you can overlay lines on top of plain color. So, you know, depending on where your students would want to go with this or where you would want to go with this, um, it, it's, you know, you can do all sorts of things. Um, Holy cow. Jane, did you draw your portrait freehand? No, I showed my students, we put a picture underneath uh -huh. and then we use the polyline tool and the curve line tool and the scribble tool. After I showed them Picasso's Weeping Women. Wow. And um, that was super fun. That's amazing. This, this was super fun. You have to really, and, and man, do, do this is super fun. <laughs> Do, um, if you, if you play around with cubism, you use the scribble line tool and you go way up. Like you go to, you go to an eight point line. Like, so look, if I go to scribble, I'm gonna do this on the side. So there's my line. Yeah. Look what happens when you go to eight, right? You can really, because Picasso is so heavy with the black lines, right? So that's how you do some of that. Um, I don't know, you know, it's funny what's driven all of us to do what we've done this year and how we've managed to get through it. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think this is all part of our creativity as artists. I don't know where any of this originated. I just started playing around one day um, and it's been a lot of fun. I do about, um, I do about, 80% of my curriculum is digital design right now. And it never has been before. So after 32 years of teaching, after 31 years, I've done all this. My background's graphic design. I worked as an, as an art director after art school. My undergrad is a bachelor of science in design. That's where I did my textile design work. Um, then I went to art center for, where I met my husband. He was transportation design, I was advertising. I worked for a year in advertising, didn't like it. It was not creative at all. Um, <laughs> and as a woman, I was not allowed to go to my client because our client was Kawasaki and I was a female art director. It was oh, in the God. late eighties and they wouldn't allow that. So I said, bye-bye. Um, the senior art director asked me to substitute his class one night. We were away on a shoot and I walked into art center and I mean to tell you, you know that like Bugs Bunny thing when your heart goes out of your body. And I walked in and I was like, this is where I've got to be. Yeah. And I realized I'd made like a huge mistake because I was like, what now? You know, and this was before cell phones. So I couldn't call my husband on the way home. And I'm like, my parents are not going to believe this. And um, I enrolled in USC and earned my master's in education. Never looked back. Um, I'm currently working on my doctoral dissertation um, on developing empathy using design thinking in elementary art education. So, you know what, like, we can't, we can't stop. What are you going to do when you stop, right? So I just keep rolling. Um, but anyway, so I hope that's helped you guys. I don't want to talk your ears off and I have been. So what questions do you guys have? Anything? This is fascinating. Nancy. Has I have a question. Um, so this is kind of a ironic kind of question, but I have done a little bit of uh, color transfer paper where you take a picture and you Xerox it and then you iron it on fabric. Have you ever done it with some of your quilt, digital quilts, like kind of doing an ironic quilt, which is like a digital, but then you put it on fabric? No, but see, now that's a great idea for me for the summer. So now, so now you've given me something for the summer. <laughs> Cause they, I that mean, sounds cool. especially what I did when I did some color transfer quilts at a school, is it's absolutely gorgeous to color transfer 
pastel, oil pastel with watercolor, the way the watercolor beads up on the, on the paper. And then when you photograph it, it comes out so bizarrely beautiful. Um, this was pre-digital art when I did this in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. And I'm just wondering, yeah, what these digital quilts would look like on a real fabric surface. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny how we kind of go full circle in life, right? Like here I am back at textile design where I was in the early 1980s. Um, you guys, here's the link to my presentation. The only thing I don't have in there um, is my email. So let me throw this in there too while we're talking. What else do you guys want to know or have questions about? How can I, how can I help you? You're all going to give it a try. I know you're going to oh, be forever. Yeah, just ideas are like popping in my head. I don't even know. I know. Where to go if you just, and, and so like really, and if you just look up um, quilt, just anything, any kind of quilt you love, if you just look it up, you're going to be like, ah, I can do that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's pretty amazing. I will tell you, um, it is really pretty amazing. And I, and I, um, Things have gone so well with Google Draw with my students. Um, I don't know if I've shown you guys this. This is a this is a total um, different way to go, and I don't want to use up all your time. But let me just show this to you right here, if I can. Well, you're here. Your your hours for an hour and a half. So. <laughs> okay, I can show this to you. Share okay. whatever. Share everything you like. We are sponges. Okay, and if you guys, um, let me come back to here for a second. I shared with you the, um, what I just, my presentation, sorry, I'm trying to talk at the same time. I'm trying to type and that doesn't work well. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm going to show this to you. I think if it'll open, my computer is probably getting a little, a little tired. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. Look, so this is kind of a follow-up to quilting. So here's what happened. Funny thing happened. Um, I came up with an assignment for my students called the secret garden. This was about a week and a half ago. And I said, you are going to make a garden using Google draw, and then you're going to research an environment. This has nothing to do with quilting, but you can see some similarities maybe because it's a lot of the same tools. I drew all of that using Google Draw. Every bit of it was done by me. You can see how I found flowers. We did research. So I found this flower right here and I did that over there, okay? Where did this idea come from? Well, what happened was I was trying to come up with something for my aunt's birthday. My aunt Jane, my mom's sister is where I think I got my, um, creativity from because she always painted as a kid and as an adult too and I found this on Etsy and I thought Google draw right <laughs> like how many times like now every time I look I'm like Google draw so I didn't copy it though I'm not, I didn't, but I emailed this woman her name is Karen Fields I emailed her and I said I'm an art teacher in Michigan I teach fifth and sixth grade I love your work and I'm wondering can I show it to my students they're going to do a Google draw project. And she was wonderful. She wrote me back. She was like, sure. I mean, I felt bad because I didn't buy anything from her, but maybe I will at some point, but her work is great. So here's what happened. Then I created, let me see if this is going to have this up here. Then I created a lesson for my students to create their own secret garden. Okay. And I showed them how to set all this up. And so here was the next slide with Karen Fields work. And you use Google Draw and you create flowers. And then you create a bunch of flowers. And then I opened a new Google Draw and put things together. And then I separately did the background. You have to imagine this without the flowers. Okay, so then that I thought I could do all of the biomes. This is kind of how cra so crazy I am. So here's, here's rainforest. Oops, wait, I gotta undo. So here's rainforest, okay. Um, I did the coral reef. 
Let me see if I can find Coral Reef for you. I'm so glad I'm showing you guys my messy um, drive. Coral Reef. So here was the environment. Oh, that's cool. And let me find the animals I put on it. Okay, so here's how my coral reef turned out. Oh, look at that. So, I mean, you guys, it's, it's, it's amazing what you can do. So the desert I'm working on, I'm not, I'm having a trouble, a little bit of trouble with the desert. Um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So I think what's happening is I'm getting too representational. I'm getting too detailed. But anyway, there's the desert. I made a little gecko. I made a little owl. I made a little bunny. Um, then the last thing I'm going to show you is how this is spun even further. So I have students doing Google Draw to make a monster. <laughs> You wouldn't think that sixth graders would find this fun. They're oh so mature, but we made monsters. And I showed them the Little Miss and Mr. books. And each monster, they made a bio page. They had to give them a name. They had to write a creative story about them. Okay. Wow. So then I wow. said, now we're going to put the monsters somewhere. So this gets back to quilting. This is how I circle back. We created a space quilt. <laughs> so so um, I showed them how to make little spaceships and you make them transparent so you can put your little monsters in there. And I said, look, they've got to be spinning around. So you got to get that scribble tool again. I'm going to go and attach this to here. I mean, once you get one thing figured out with this, you can just go and go and go. So... So that's kind of where it where it lands. But this has been a whole lot of fun. Um, so thank you, but thank you for having me. I'm I'm still here. I mean, it's almost eight o'clock, but I mean, we can talk more. I can this try and think of what else I have. Um, what was what did you find was your your most successful um, flipping from traditional art making to digital? This um, it started with the mosaic project and I don't know how many of you saw this but Janine Campbell is another um, she's a northern Michigan art teacher mm -hmm. she and I co-wrote an article that was published in school arts in uh, I want to say April um, that went bonkers oh Jen Stark do you guys know Jen Stark's work no okay Jen Stark I can show you the the mosaics too we're about to. We did. We did a session where the mosaics were shown okay. to us real quick, and I think every single art teacher in this country did digital mosaics. Yeah. So I know. So we're done on that one. But here's <laughs> Jen Stark. No, I think. Oh wow. Okay. Here's Jen Stark. So you know, there's a common thread here, right? Yeah. This also looks a lot like textile design, even though it isn't. Look at what she uses: felt tip pen on paper. Jen Stark is super cool. Um, that's what she looks like. She was born in 1983. Look what oh, she's God. wearing. Yeah. 1983. I know. I know she's just a baby. Sheesh. Um, the but painting work... you just showed us reminds me there's a Japanese artist whose work is very similar to the painting that I just, that you just, I do up. a lesson on Jacob Hashimoto. Yeah. Probably. Is that the one? And that's hexagons. Um, um I don't think, no. His, his, the, he has a painting in at the MoMA, uh, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and I can't, it's like a, a tidal wave of weird shapes and Japanese style cartoon characters. Okay, that's not the same one, but I can, I can show you Hashimoto really quickly after this. Um, this is what she does. This is her, some of her 3D work. She does public work. Um, this is great for the end of the school year. Right, because everybody looks like that. We've all gone bonkers. This is one of hers again. So here's what I did. This is, she's known for these. These are called drippies. And kids can use markers. I don't have markers for them to use because we're virtual this year. And, and honestly, I wouldn't spend the time on this for me, but for kids, if extra credit, go for it. I've seen 
murals done, school murals, everybody does a strip and that kind of thing. But that's, I try not to do bulletin boards if I can help it anymore. <laughs> I make it easy, I don't know. Okay, um, so here are mine. So um, this is just a lot of fun. You just play with shapes. Um, I mean, it, it just, I, I love her work. The other one is, let me get to, I'll show you Jacob Hashimoto, because he's another, so Jacob Hashimoto is, um, let's see, I'll show you this. Jacob Hashimoto was born in Greeley, Colorado. Um, and this is his work. So you can kind of see what I've been able to find are a lot of things. Now I used to teach this, the, tr the tradition, sort of traditional to what he does. He uses um, bamboo, he uses um, real light Japanese paper. He uses string and he makes these discs. This is a little dark, but he makes these giant displays hmm. based on a hexagon and a, and a circle. These are up close, hmm. right? So again, um, Maybe in my former life, I was a quilter because I seem to keep going back to these things a lot. I had my students, we would make some of these in the old days, like last year. Um, <laughs> in the old days. This is what it looks like in a gallery. Wow. Here's another one of his. Here's another one of his. See, I'm obsessed with patterns too. So. I am too. This is what we did. So this is what I showed them to do. They had to make three different hexagons. These are mine. Mm -hmm. Then they put them together um, in a composition like this. Okay, so they over they learned this was to teach them how to use the transparency tool and how to use the recolor tool. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you. I just found his name. The one I was thinking of is Takashi Murakami and Cynthia. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. so these are fun. Um, Reggie Laurent, I've done Stuart Davis. This little girl, this is one of my fifth graders. I entered this in our region show and it moved on to the top 18 in the state. Um, based on Reggie Laurent, you know, so I've so you can do some David Hockney like this. You can do, um, this was one of my class jam boards that my school put on one of their emails. I have kids use jam board. We make group murals all the time. Those are some fifth graders. So the sky is the limit. There is no stopping. Once you start with this, there is really no stopping. Um, I even did, so do you guys, you guys know Stuart Davis, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So for years, for years, I've done a Stuart Davis project. And I did a jazz collage using Google Draw. I don't have the energy to teach it though. It's, it's, this is my jazz collage. That's all using Google Draw. <laughs> we used to all do this with construction paper, scissors, and glue. So I, this was one of my samples that I had made out of construction paper. I play jazz music. I show them how to do a few things, big cities and jazz. We talk overlapping mm -hmm. and I just taught myself how to do it. Um, so yeah, there was that. Those are amazing. So you it's fun. A, a wealth of information. Well, I, I hope it helps. You know what? I feel like this year is like share and share and share. I'm <laughs> like, yeah. So you guys, all of this I've done with Chromebooks. My students have Chromebooks only. So I'm at home on my, our desktop, but I have a laptop that I do this on and the kids have gotten really good with Chromebooks. And I tell you what, you know what? Um, I believe that what we're doing with technology is a life skill. Yes. And we may wish for all of them to become grandiose artists in this world but the reality is the majority of them will not but the majority of them will have jobs where they have to use technology 
And whether it's putting together a presentation or whether they're trying to do something else, um, they will now know how to do this forever. So, anyway. Did you have a question? Your hand is up. Nancy? No, no, it okay. was up, it was up. Okay. But I do have a quick question. So I teach TK mm -hmm. and I unfortunately didn't do digital stuff this year. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking I should, I tried to take workshops and I never mm -hmm. did it. Um, can you do this with five-year-olds? I mean, is it, or do something with five? You could do something, right? Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. And what I think you can do, well, says the one who hasn't taught that great. What I might want to try is very basic shape making because one of my teacher friends who teaches in Pennsylvania, she sent me a, a plea text in the middle of the day, this is back in the winter. And she said, I'm sharing my screen right now. She said, um, help, I've got some students that are special needs and I'm trying to do something and it's too complicated. What do you think they could do with Google Draw? And I said, do this, you can teach them shapes. You can teach them, this is a circle. You can teach them primary colors. You can teach them and they can draw these. I'll show you what I did with her. I'm just, I'm just doing this right now and I'm gonna pick a square, okay? So now, do you expect them to be able to go in no. and, push and move and drag? No, no, no. Here's what I'm talking about. If you gave them something like this, and if you said to them, click the red circle, and if they clicked the red circle, do you think you could teach them to copy and paste? That would be the question. Otherwise, give them a bunch of shapes like this and have them play around. They can move these shapes. You could give them a line. You could talk about a line like this. If you gave them a bunch of elements, they could certainly move them around. I would think, I mean, Kids are pretty savvy. What I'm doing, not to panic you, is I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna put white behind it and I'm gonna move this to the back. And how big can you make that line at the top where you're pulling and cutting and dragging? This line right here or this line, the scribble line or the outline? No, no, line? no, the, the line where you're pulling shapes and picking colors and the, the where it's bold, italic, underline. How large can that be for the kids? kids letter. Oh. Yeah, you know what? I don't know. You may kind of be stuck with the screen that you have. Or, or I guess you, you could be able to the change it. You might be able to change the size of it if you adjust the resolution on the computer screen mm -hmm. because that makes everything bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know there's accessibility it, stuff. So yeah. On it, the might, computer. it might reduce how many of these menu items you'll see if you mm -hmm. increase it. Um, but they, yeah, I know what you're saying. They need stuff bigger for, for their mm -hmm. um, tactile, yeah. If they, have, if they have touch screen, can't they enlarge like this? Enlarge the whole screen? I would imagine they'd be able to, yeah. So, I mean, you could try something like this. It would be fun, actually, and, and to be perfectly honest, this would be a great way to introduce any group to this. Give anybody something. If you pretend, if somebody landed here from, from Mars and they'd never seen any of this before and you give them this and you give them one tool to use, you're going to use the moving object tool. Okay. You'd have to give them enough things, like give them a whole bunch of things. Okay. And then when they get that done, then you can teach them, take the little circle and now you can change things around. Give them a bunch of letters. You could teach them when they're older to write a word, right? You, I mean, so I think that there's a lot that you could do. And I don't know what all they're doing at lower elementary with computers in general. That would be a question, you know, I just don't know. 
if you could get them to draw their own shapes, you could have them do like the Kandinsky circles with layers and overlapping and different mm -hmm. color rings, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then they could do a variation with triangles and squares instead of just circles. Then they can learn to make bugs and monsters <laughs> <laughs> and worms. Oh yeah. Well, the you know, hardest it, thing is to is to adapt to the tools, but once you mm -hmm. know where the tools are and what they do, then you can have them do anything. Right. I mean, because these two at the these two above the scribble, the curve line. Right. So this is how you just I'm just playing around. Go back to the beginning, and now you've got a shape. So you can talk about abstract shapes. You can talk about you know, do a thing on color, make the, make these shapes secondary colors. Um, here's the polyline. You know, um, so there, it's wide open. And usually when I start this with my students, be, I, because fifth graders, here's the thing. In our district, K through four, we have art all the way up through 12th grade. Well, in the high school selectives, but, but K through eight, it's a requirement. And so they start at lower grades. They never do this in art because we've always been hands-on, right? Until this year. So I had some fifth graders saying, when are we gonna do real art? Oh, so wow. then that opens up a discussion about what is art, real. right? And so, because what real means to them is comfortable. They're used to, let me watercolor paint, let me cut and glue, let me um, clay, let me, and that's fine. There's definitely a place for that, for sure. But I had to kind of help, and, and they had trouble. They had trouble, uh, I read a recent article that um, children's attention span right now is eight seconds. Oh boy. Eight seconds. That is in the most recent edition of the USC School for Education's magazine. So we're battling kids that have an eight second attention span. I don't know how those Google mosaics went for all of you, but in my class, I had kids extremely frustrated. And I said, if you need to take a step away and come back, I mean, they loved it, mm -hmm. but that's that level of, they can't stick with it. Patience. That's mm -hmm. the other thing we have to teach them is patience because mm -hmm. And, and my kids who, who pushed themselves through the, the frustration and the monotony of it, the results were outstanding, mm -hmm. absolutely outstanding. And the other one that I, I loved, which it had never occurred to me either until I, I saw a teacher post it. And it's like, you know, we get very, um, we fall into our own ruts, you know, and, and then it, all it takes is seeing another teacher explain how they did something and it's it could be the easiest thing in the world but if you're in that rut and you're not looking in that direction you're not thinking that way and she explained to me how did i did one of our sessions was digital mandalas mm -hmm. teaches symmetry it again teaches shapes all the elements and principles it's and it's just perfect mm -hmm. and again if the kids could be patient enough you know, to push through the repetition of it, mm -hmm. the results are outstanding. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's what we have to work with the kids the most is that it's not always about the end result. It's the process mm -hmm. and it takes patience and it takes revising and it takes trial and error and experimentation. And if you don't like it, throw it out and try again. You know, it, there's no right or wrong necessarily mm -hmm. you know, in the grand scheme of things. And that's what, that's what they come in. They come in with these preconceived notions that if I don't do it exactly like she says, and if it's not perfect, it, it I won't pass. And I mean, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to keep reminding them. I'm not grading you on becoming a master artist. I'm right. grading you at keeping your mind open and trying the things I'm asking you to do and giving me your best effort. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. give up before you even try, you're not gonna end up doing anything. But oh, I, I know. Wanna see, I wanna see you push past your own, 
your own fears. I'm not an artist. I can't do this. So, you know, you know, before we started, I was not a digital artist. You know, I didn't, I like getting my hands dirty. That's what I went back to after 25 years of graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, and now I had to push myself to learn all these apps and this technology <laughs> when I tried to run away from it. And here I am, like you said, full circle yeah. back again where I started. It, it's a life lesson. And yeah. that's what they have to understand. It's just, we never stop learning. That's right. That's, we that's never so true. Learning. We never do. And um, I don't know, just a side note, I don't know how many of you all are planning to attend um, NAEA in New York. Yes. Um, absolutely. I've put in a couple proposals. I'm not doing anything spe as a specific lesson per se. I will, there's one, I think I'm talking, I, I don't know. And who even knows if they'll get accepted. I, I don't even know. Did you but, propose um, a lecture? Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm one. Do you know, do you guys know Holly Best Kincaid? She's Virginia yes. Art Ed. Okay. Yes. So Holly and I are, have put in a proposal together and that one will be talking about a lot of the things I've done with Google design, Google draw. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I've got a couple of other ones in there that are more on leadership because I went for the school, went to the school for art leaders at NAEA in 2019. You went um, to the, was that Crystal Bridges? Yes. How was that? Oh my God. Okay, life changing. I I mean, here I am. Oh God, I feel like I'm going down another story path. Okay, okay it was great. Okay. It was on my I, I actually applied and I got a scholarship and I wasn't able to do it that year. And I haven't had the chance to to reapply but i was very interested very very interested it's really wonderful i highly highly recommend it um for a lot of reasons first of all crystal museum crystal bridges is a, is a, in itself an amazing museum so that's one um you're in a small group of people dennis and holson is the facilitator along with enid zimmerman and bob sable um Holly was one of our mentors and she ended up being the mentor of my group. And um, I grew up originally in Roanoke, Virginia. And mm -hmm. so here she is, Virginia Art Ed Association. So um, that was really cool. But you make lifelong connections with that. You really, really do. Um, I talked to them. In fact, I just talked to Holly last night. And so it's a cool thing. If you get a chance to do it, do it. Um, you know what I'm saying is that this entire journey for me started with an art group. I went to um, multiple visions with, um, oh my God, I'm blanking out on her name. It, it, it was a, a PD in DC three years ago where um, art teachers from all across the country meet up in DC and we did like eight to 10 museums in four or five days, um, Renee, Renee, something or other. And I met people from VAEA in that group. And then we've been online friends and then they invited me. I was sitting here wishing, God, I, I need people to make art with. I just wanna make art. I don't wanna necessarily teach it, but I wanna make it, I wanna <laughs> learn new things. And then they posted their, their VAEA Friday night draw. And one of my friends invited me in and, and now I'm part of that group. And then I'm like, why don't we have this in New York city? Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest, um, you know, school districts in the country. So I took it to my union guy and he's like, do it. Yeah. So that's how this thing got started. And mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, we are, all one big community across this country. And I have met so many great people through this entire process. Mm -hmm. It is it is phenomenal. And it's it's amazing how many of us know each other yeah. through these these different um, programs and the convention oh, yeah. and the and the NAEA and um, I don't know if you know Matt Young. Have you heard oh, yeah. his name? He I met him on I I I tracked him down online too. And I begged him to do a few, he did three of our sessions and um, he taught a couple of courses at the convention this year, this past um, spring. Mm -hmm. And now he's president of uh, the Ohio art teachers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you make all these connections and it is, 
an invaluable resource. It really is. And I think that that for me has been such a great silver lining. I presented virtually in Illinois because Michigan, we went, we paired up with Illinois last mm -hmm. fall. Right. And that was really fun and I got to meet some other people. It's just all about meeting people. And I don't know, I think in our day, we're kind of, um, well, I feel kind of isolated because I'm the only art teacher in my building. Same. You know, and so <laughs> I don't even Same. see the people across the hall from me. Yeah. Um, exactly. I eat lunch in my room. I'm just, you know what? I'm like, I'm like, been there, done that. I'm not going to eat in the teacher's lounge. Like, I just, I just, I just <laughs> no. Yeah, stay away. So, yeah. I mean, and they're wonderful people. I just don't want to get it. I just, I, I, I want to be efficient with my time. And so I like to eat in my room and get things ready. And, you know, but. the kids don't ever let me leave my room because they all come yeah. to me for their lunch. So I feel like my room is I'm, I'm a prisoner in my room all day long. Once I open the door, everybody comes and hangs out or they make art or they want to talk or, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. I get now, it. Laura, I see your message. You're the only art teacher in your whole county. That's crazy. Oh my God. I am. I, I'm, in, I'm a pretty small county in Maryland, but over the years, it's my 16th year. Um, and slowly but surely, as one teacher leaves and transfers, they just don't hire them back. Wow. So I, I'm it. Do you bounce between schools? You're in multiple schools? Or? No, not, in, not anymore. So we have five elementary schools in the county and my elementary school is the only one with art. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's horrible. Yeah. That's and they all, all five elementary schools feed into the same middle school who has art. Okay. So what do the other elementary schools offer in turn? Do they have music or? Um, they all have music. Um, one has band. And that's it for the fine art. Wow. wow. Uh -huh. Huh. So yeah, very, very lonely over here. <laughs> yeah, wow. I feel you. I completely feel you. So this, this is why this is so important. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for all of these wonderful people who, who I've met and you've rallied with me and connected. And if there's anything I can ever do to help you guys out, please send up a flare and, and I'm there. Yeah. This is, um, terrific. Yeah. Let me know. You guys have my email address, so feel free to email me anytime. I check my email all the time. I'm one of like, honestly, all the time, except when I'm sleeping. Um, but, and I'm surprised I don't check it then. Um, but yeah. Um, but listen, if you guys need any other ideas, if you go, what was that one you mentioned about so-and-so? just email me. I can send it your way. Um, I'm just happy to help. You know, we, we've just got to keep getting ourselves through it and figure out what we're going to do next year. Cause now I have all these wonderful projects and I don't want to give them up, but okay. now we're going to be fitting in clay, which is wonderful and printmaking, which is, they're all wonderful. They're all wonderful, but I'm going to have to, I don't know. There's no reason to give it up. You just have to, you know, different units. You're going to, we we're yeah. doing a, a unit on digital arts and we're going yeah. to do five projects in digital arts. And then we're yeah. going to do old school hands-on getting messy That's right. and, you know. And here's what's so cool about this. I used to never have them bring their Chromebooks to the art room. Uh-huh. Right. And so now that's all, that's what they bring. So now in the future, always bring your Chromebook to the art room. I'm going to show them at the beginning how to do things. Then when we do traditional art, when they finish some of those projects, then they can go back. You know what I mean? It's going to kind of layer is what I figure. You know, what'll be cool is that like an end of year project. Now that you have all these skills, mm -hmm. blow my mind and do whatever you want. Create, right. Like give them a, a, a generic, generic framework, but it's up to you. You pick your tools, you pick your theme mm -hmm. and blow my mind. And that's your final project. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you. This was great. Not everybody is comfortable with digital. Not everybody is comfortable getting their hands dirty. So there's right. something for everybody to to work with. So for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is 25 after eight. Does anybody have any last questions? I am a fan.
Thank you so much. Jamie. <laughs> Thank you. This was fun. Anytime. Email me if you need me to do anything again. I, I can always hop on and do things. So. Oh, I, I definitely. You're you're on my list of uh, speed dial people now. <laughs> help! Yeah, help! Yeah, I know. Uh, Our resort to Spain. Yes. Thank <laughs> oh, a little oh Barcelona God. for me this summer. Oh, I can't wait. All right, you guys. Thank you. Have a good night, Thank all you. So much. Ooh, farther night, east everybody. coasters than I. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Steph. Thank you.